Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us today uh, for our second webinar on Flaksha Tech Leaders Fellowship. Uh, we can wait for another couple of minutes so that you know a few more participants can join us. Uh, so just to check out on our technology, those who are joined. Uh, so if someone can, uh, you know, either use the chat option or the Q and A option to, you know, let us know if the sound is working fine. Are you able to hear us? Can you see our screens? If someone has written to us, yes. Okay. So we are good to go on that side. Uh, a bit more housekeeping from our side, so uh, we can stop at intermittent intervals to, you know, get, take questions from your side. Uh, you can use the Q&A tab at the bottom of the, you know, on the bottom of the screen to type in your questions, and uh, we can take in the questions at regular intervals. Uh, so without much delay, let me start. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jiva. I'm part of the program team at Flaxa Tech Leaders Fellowship. I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, further to which I also did a, a postgraduate program called the Young India Fellowship from Ashoka University and went on working at Ashoka Center for Entrepreneurship for a couple of years before, you know, coming across this uh, initiative called uh, Plaksha Tech Leaders Fellowship. And for the last five, six months, I have been part of the team witnessing some of the, you know, latest things happening around. And uh, uh, I would like to thank our host for the day, Mr. Ananda Sengupta, for joining us. So Ananda is on the one of the program committee members of Tech Leaders Fellowship. He's a vice president at, at Nagaro. Uh, he is also an entrepreneur as a healthcare startup called Backmandi. So thanks, Ananda, for joining us. Uh, he just got back from US uh, yesterday, and you know I was just wondering how he is not bothered with the jet lag. So thanks again, Ananda, for joining us. All right. Thanks. We, uh, thanks. We, uh, yeah, sure. We also have Pallavi Jane. Uh, she leads the program team at Tech Leaders Fellowship. She works with the Boston Consulting Group and you know is also working with us on this project. So thanks once again, Pallavi, for taking out some time to join us for the day. Uh, without much further delay, let me hand it over to Anatha to take out the webinar from her. Yeah. Hi everybody. Uh, uh, welcome to this uh, first session of the, uh, the discussion about the Plaksha Tech Leaders Fellowship. Uh, let's move to the next slide, uh, Jiva. All right. So um, I'm I'm sure uh, quite a few of you at least have had the chance to look through the website, and it gives you some sense of uh, what we are trying to achieve here. Uh, but it's fundamentally it's a one-year uh, master's level program. So it is for people with uh, undergraduate degrees. And this is co-delivered with uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, there's a Sutarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. And they are involved with us uh, in this program. So we have uh, taken the original design from one of the data X courses they had, and then enhanced that into a program that is very meaningful for uh, both India as well as the world overall. So um, our goal here is really to look at whether we can help students to design uh, large scale solutions, which are uh, grounded in technology, of course, but at the same time, we want the students to be innovative and entrepreneurial as well as uh, be impactful in the way they design solutions and as well as deliver them. So you'll see that the program certificate is uh, going to be signed off by Berkeley as well as Baksha University. Next slide. Uh, at a glance, uh, what we have is, uh, it's a one year program. This year we're gonna start in July, 2020, or next year, sorry. We'll start in July, 2020. And we'll have about 30 odd visiting faculty, which will be have a mix of um, people coming from the academia as well as people who work with companies uh, and work in the areas which are relevant in this context specifically. 
So the program that we are, uh, the tech program, the tech part of it is actually uh, the area of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we are going to have faculty members from Berkeley and Purdue coming and teaching the, that part. And as well as uh, we have a number of other faculty members which we'll talk about on the way. Uh, so we're going to have a cohort of 60 students. And of course, uh, what we uh, prefer are people who come with a certain amount of mathematical background. And the reason is uh, for studying AIML properly, one needs to have a good level of grounding in uh, mathematics. And of course, a certain amount of knowledge of programming. Uh, we'll talk about how we are going to augment that, but this is something that we do want. The venue of this, uh, the program is going to be uh, Gurgaon. So it's in sector 18 in Gurgaon, where uh, in the middle of a lot of offices. And then there's going to be, it's a completely residential program because the program is a very intense one. It's a one year program, but it is very similar to what people do in the MBA programs in India. Uh, but yeah, and even more intense perhaps. And so uh, we do need people to live nearby. And of course, we expect to people to be students to be able to work long hours. Uh, so just to let you know that there's their housing is also close by for that. So uh, this, uh, so let's just a quick uh, mention on Plaksha University, which is uh, under which this programming ta is taking place. It has been founded by about 60 business leaders and technology entrepreneurs uh, across multiple countries. And it's a pretty wide mix. Uh, so some of the pictures are here. You will find a lot of other names um, on the website. And just it's just interesting that uh, there are a lot of people who have just come together because they want to actually have a large impact on our society as, and the country. And they all want to contribute in meaningful ways uh, to our lives. Next slide. Uh, now, the point of having a lot of uh, industry people and a lot of entrepreneurs involved is so that we can have create interesting opportunities with for students uh, as they go through an academic program. And this academic program is guided by a very strong academic advisory board. And you will see the uh, uh, Professor Shankar Shastri, who was the former Dean of Engineering at UC Berkeley. You have uh, Professor B.N. Jain, who has been very involved. It uh, had been a professor of computer science at IIT Delhi and former Vice Chancellor of Bits Bilani. You have got uh, Anant Agarwal of edX. You've got Professor James Holloway from University of Michigan. He has recently moved from there, of course. Ashish Nanda, Sharad Malik from Princeton, um, Arvind Raman, who is uh, Associate Dean of Faculty in the Mechanical Engineering Department at Purdue, and Abhijit Banerjee from MIT, who is the recent Nobel Laureate. And so these, uh, all of these individuals are very important to us because they help us define the program overall for Plaksha University. And they also have a say in what we are doing in the Tech Leaders Fellowship Program. Next slide. So let's talk about the curriculum a little bit. So we have uh, four fundamental pillars or uh, four fundamental blocks of education here. The technology core, as I mentioned, was uh, is artificial intelligence and machine learning. And their technology, uh, sorry, technical electives, I would say, which cover multiple other topics. Again, you will see that list probably on the website but uh, some of them could in, uh, in, include cybersecurity, include uh, uh, things like human computer interaction. So um, these are a number of things that are important for understanding the technology aspect. Now to appreciate how to design solutions and how to design solution for a societal context, we uh, have courses on design thinking and systems thinking and then we have also a series of uh, courses on grand challenges. And these grand challenges include uh, courses which will talk about how to apply technology in the area of 
uh, certain topics which are relevant to uh, the world, which include healthcare, uh, environment, uh, could include uh, the financial systems, um, elections, public policy, things like that. Now, um, why this is important is when you design solutions, often in an academic program, you uh, don't get the chance to work on topics which are relevant to the society or even to the organizations. And as a result, there's a lot of relearning or additional learning that are required inside the companies or corporates that you go into. But here, we, our idea was to teach that, and as a result, help you uh, understand how to build solutions for the space. Taking one step further is the real world experiences. There are two interesting ways we try to do it. One is inside the uh, university itself, which is inside the program, there's something called a challenge lab. A challenge lab is an opportunity for people to think a little bit entrepreneurially, where people get a chance to pick up a grand challenge or a large challenge and try to, as if start a company in that space. In the process, when you start thinking of designing solutions where you have to go and sell it, you have to think of different ways of design. And that's a very interesting uh, topic to cover. And then the industry capstone where uh, the students get a chance to work uh, with a company. There's also an option to go and work with a faculty uh, in a foreign university. Um, so that's uh, also part an example of a capstone that we offer for people who actually want to then perhaps pursue a PhD or higher studies in this area. Finally, uh, the very important block, uh, we have appreciated that while we learn all of the different things, we also need to manage uh, ourselves and also learn how to interact with people in teams. And here we have a number of leadership courses we also have communication courses in this context so that people can develop their own ways of communication. Other than that, we also offer one-on-one -on -one mentor mentorship with some industry leaders. And it's a, again, an important aspect for people who want to uh, you know, get advice while being in the university itself. Next slide. This slide actually talks about some of the core courses that we teach. And as I mentioned that while we expect people to come with some knowledge, we also have refresher courses in mathematics as well as a refresher course in programming in Python. These are faculty members who have, who are already teaching these, this course this year and will has, have, some of them have already committed to teach the next year as well. The foremost is Dr. Ravi Kothari, who is, who is the former chief scientist of IBM Research in India. And he has also taught at the University of Cincinnati in the US. And he's a very senior person who, in fact, is also teaches at Ashoka University at this point. So he's one of the lead people. Uh, with him, of course, is Dr. Iklak Sidhu, who is <coughs> the director of Sutarja Center of Entrepreneurship and Technology at Berkeley. We have uh, Dr. James Shanahan, who uh, teaches at UC Berkeley, Deep Learning at UC Berkeley, and Alex, uh, who was also teaches at the CET. Now, uh, <coughs> below you're seeing some of the other courses. Of course, uh, as we teach uh, courses in uh, the area of AI, we also have to understand <clears throat> how to scale solutions. And Anurag Sahai teaches that. <clears throat> as well as uh, Professor Weimer, who teaches uh, Internet of, will be teaching Internet of Medical Things, which is a very interesting application of AI in this space. Next slide. Okay, next slide. Oh, sorry, just go back, sorry, my mistake. So uh, some of the other courses we were talking about is uh, design thinking, systems thinking, and uh, some of the courses which are very important. Again, you will see a uh, number of eminent faculty members who are coming from uh, institutes, uh, various institutes. And the important point we are making is our, our goal here is to give the opportunity for students to 
study under uh, really uh, high quality faculty so that whatever they learn, they at least learn what, which is everything that's world class and get a chance to work with, uh, uh, get a chance to actually learn uh, and also understand where to apply these solutions in different parts. Next slide. I was talking about the Grand Challenge courses. So these are the four that were offered this year. Uh, so one is uh, in health, Dr. Anurag Garwal, who uh, actually leads the Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology under CSIR. He himself is a Bhatnagar Award winner, um, which is one of the highest scientific awards offered in India. Uh, Professor Chibur, who has been working in, on exit polls in uh, Indian politics for many years and uh, as a very seasoned faculty member at UC Berkeley. Dr. Saraswat, who teaches uh, large data set analysis and applications in agricultural space. And Gaurav Sharma, who actually works with a startup which works in the area of FinTech. Next slide. Uh, then we talked about the Challenge Lab. And the Challenge Lab uh, is again a mini entrepreneurial journey where you pick up one of the uh, grand challenge areas or some other uh, similar kind of interesting problem set. Uh, and what we do is we create teams of five people and they, their goal is to build a company while designing a solution for in that under that company. The interesting thing in the process is they get a chance of uh, to actually work with a faculty or with a, sorry, or with uh, um, an entrepreneur to understand how to go about uh, doing this. So we have a number of lectures in this space and it is taught under, uh, by a faculty member who is trained in this, uh, David Law of UC Berkeley, as well as Alok Mittal, who uh, he's a serial entrepreneur himself and also has been a VC uh, in this space. Next slide. We talked about the industry capstone, uh, but the capstone has, as I said, there are three paths available in front of us. As people go to the challenge lab, what people also will understand some of uh, the students who come in the program, understand how to, uh, that they want to be an entrepreneur or they perhaps want to uh, work with a faculty member on a research program. So uh, the capstone has three parts. One is they, you can work on a project with a company uh, under AIML, of course. The other option is to work on a research project with a faculty member that could be in India or outside India. So uh, both Purdue and Berkeley have offered projects in this space. And then entrepreneurship opportunities there, of course, you will uh, work with uh, under guidance of a real entrepreneur uh, himself or herself and get a chance to work on some ideas that you the students themselves may have. Next slide. Um, I talked about uh, as well as some leadership courses. So we have got uh, Dr. Kenwin Smith who teaches uh, organizational behavior at UPenn uh, Wharton. And he is uh, himself uh, very uh, knowledgeable. We have Ken Singer who will cover the leadership bootcamp. Then when we start the program is from UC Berkeley. Uh, then uh, Wanto Group is a group which teach, uh, works on leadership and performance with multiple corporates as well as universities. Uh, uh, then uh, Pramod Sina, who will also talk about leadership in the workplace. We have the communication courses, which is uh, one is about written communication. The other one is about uh, verbal communication on, in terms of persuasive presence. So these are all interesting courses which help you build yourself as well as you go along. So because we appreciate that technical knowledge is one thing, but at the same time, learning how to work in groups, how to take leadership positions, and even understanding yourself that whether you're a leader or a follower and how to deal with that, uh, with your understanding yourself is also very important. Next slide. So this is just to give an, a quick idea because we have already started this course, uh, the first year of this course uh, since August. Uh, there's some feedback that we received. Uh, I'm sure again, you'll have a chance to read some of these over on our website as well. But 
the point we want to make is what is very interesting and important is the students have been uh, very enthusiastic about learning. And that's something the faculty members also look for in a big way. And uh, so the value of doing that is when we, uh, so as a result, the impact on the students is also greater. And here we are showing some of, we just displaying some of the feedback that we have received. Uh, next slide. So uh, this is our program committee for this, uh, the Tech Leaders Fellowship Program. We have Dr. Vineet Gupta, who is uh, in Google Brain at Mountain View. And he has been involved with Dr. Nita Goel, who is also in the machine intelligence group in Google. So these are two members who are from Google. I am uh, from Nagaro and I have been, uh, when I founded my startup, these are some of the learnings that I needed to have myself. Um, Dr. Iklak Sidhu, who has of course uh, started the Sutaja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. He himself is very, very accomplished gentleman for a number of uh, papers to his name, of course, and as well as he has also been an entrepreneur himself and successfully so. Um, then we have Dr. Devrath Shah, who uh, teaches at MIT, uh, and now, right now, also has his own startup in this space of AIML. And Dr. B.N. Jain, who, of course, uh, has been with IIT Delhi for a long time. The TLF program overall is co-chaired by Vineet Gupta, who was founder and trustee of Ashoka and also founder and trustee of Laksha. He uh, is himself an entrepreneur for 25 years. Uh, Dr. Iklasidhu himself, again, they are co-chairs co of the program. We have a project team with, who have a good amount of corporate experience as well as uh, worked with top tier education institutes. And uh, so this is Pallavi Jain, who is uh, on secondment from Boston Consulting Group. We have Srinath, who actually uh, was a YA fellow himself, but has been working with other companies and then have come to Plaksha, has come to Plaksha for helping us out in the operation side. And uh, Ram, uh, Dr. Ram Sharma, who uh, actually has been with Shivnadar before, and he has been a Fulbright Scholar at UC Berkeley, and right now at University of Oxford as a Chief Dean Fellow. Uh, so um, as we go down this path, I wanted to make a pause and see if there are immediate questions. We can, of course, uh, keep going, uh, and we can, of course, come back to the, but this, but feel free to ask questions at this stage onwards. Uh, we have uh, also guest lectures, uh, which is independent of the program. And the reason for having these guest lectures is to give different perspectives. And because there are lots of, a uh, number of very interesting people across the world who actually work in uh, areas which are very valuable or very relevant to this program overall. And so we have been inviting uh, a variety of people and you will see, you'll see a short list of some of the names here. This is not the exhaustive name, list of names, but the point is we are just want to give a sense of people who are coming and teaching or talking to the students. Next slide. Um, just to give a sense of the guest lectures, there could be lectures on fundraising, there are lectures on women empowerment, uh, a variety of other lectures on leadership and so on and so forth. Now, um, why are we doing this and why should you consider this program, right? So the idea is this program is, uh, again, a launchpad for a variety of technology careers. And why this is important to us is uh, the, it's called the Tech Leaders Fellowship Program because, but at the same time, the idea is not necessarily going to a corporate. The idea is that you can choose to become a product manager uh, in a company, or you could be starting your own company, right? Um, that's one way of thinking about it. If you want to be a data scientist, this program is also going to give you a certain amount of grounding. Of course, to be a really high quality data scientist, 
you will need to do a lot of self learning and this program is a launch pad for that it is not the end of the program that of course and then of course uh, what you may want to do is you might want to become uh, a phd program at the end of it and uh, that of course is the the idea is that you may um, uh, of course have to pursue further studies if you want to go into a research uh, to become a researcher in a, a serious way so the idea is that you have different types of paths that you can take through the program and why it is important to look at a program like this is you may want to look at this also from a perspective of you will build a network or you will get a chance to work with very high quality faculty who also are important because you may want some if you do really well and you get a recommendation for someone like that that may help you continue your phd program or you have a chance to work with in a cohort of really high quality people who all want to pursue the area of data science and hence in the long run you will be able to help each other so both areas uh, as a concept works here next slide so some of the companies uh, in our network through the process of them uh, most of them are co-founders of our program and uh, we have got uh, this list of companies of course it does not necessarily mean they are all going to hire from our program but at the same time they we have got commitment from probably 70 80% of them and they they would do want to hire from our program so just to put in perspective so and we have got a question from an anonymous attendee is there a placement set in place and how beneficial is it with respect to placements so we can see the name of the person yeah sure uh yeah that's okay so we so the placement cell as a concept so first of all the answer is yes of course we do have placement cell now what we do is uh, we do in our as just like any program uh in any university this uh the placement cell will also have students who will be involved so we do have as a process an academic committee from the student as much as from inside the university right and so we do uh, support that this uh, this cell will help in the process of uh, the uh, placements at the same time these companies are obviously already in our network and they are already uh, given us a certain number of positions each of them will want to fulfill through, from this program um just to answer one more question we having from another anonymous and this is available in chennai or is it full time so i think we have already covered that this is a fully residential program based out of the town uh yeah so yeah next slide so uh let's quickly talk about the process a little bit so mm -hmm. the eligibility here is uh, an undergrad degree in a subject which is uh, science oriented so engineering math or science in the first year we have considered taking people from a couple of other uh, lines but what we have what we still feel is an important amount of grounding is necessary in mathematics so that's probably something that we always want the other thing is uh, we do uh, want people uh, who uh, sorry the other thing is it is very much a postgraduate program and uh, so of course we do want people who have finished their graduation or about to finish it uh, we do want uh, very much are open to people who have few years of experience because some of the uh, topics are well understood uh, if you have some years of experience uh the other thing is uh what and um, sorry in the process the stage one is uh, there's a test that we take uh so the application form first and then we have a test and interview so the application form will cover certain questions where we do want to see creativity that you have as well as the important point we do want to understand is why would you want to apply to this program and that's an important aspect we do want to cover so we have uh, two questions pending one from sunny do you have any course related to cyber security okay 
The answer is yes. Uh, you may have, uh, I don't know whether you saw on the slide, one slide actually covered this topic. So we have a faculty mem member coming from University of Maryland College Park, who has been teaching cybersecurity for many years. And he uh, is going to teach this course. Um, another question, maybe know about the company's hiring from Laksha University. Is there a good placement percentage with respect to students in the course? Um, the answer to that is, uh, well, the number, the companies that hire will hire, be hiring from Laksha. Some of the names that you saw on the list, definitely. Um, and about placement, you must understand this is one of the hot areas of uh, learning, the area of AIML. Uh, if you read anything about it, publicly from uh, whether from the internet or wherever you are getting your research information from, you'll realize that uh, placement is not a problem in this space. It's the real challenge has been lack of resources. So we expect 100% placement easily. Having said that, uh, not every person may want to be placed. So that's the only thing I will say. So hence automatically uh, that matters. We have another question from Ragesh. Would this program be relevant for someone who is in the final year of MBA currently? Um, so it depends. I will answer the question carefully because if you're already doing an MBA, you may have a certain path in front of you. And I don't know what the path that you have thought about for yourself. Uh, of course, it is relevant uh, if you want to be a product manager, for example. But if you are doing an MBA and you have a path that you want to be a finance professional, so of course this course may be a little less relevant, but at the, at the same time, of course, you can apply, you do apply uh, AIML in finance. So, so the point is, it depends on what your final career goals are and what you want to be. And so that matters a lot. Uh, now, we have, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, I'm looking at the questions. I'm seeing the questions now. Okay, so I'll sure. Just, sure. So I'm looking at someone's asking for about Afghanistan, you're from Afghanistan. The answer is yes, of course you can apply. I don't see that's a problem at all from applying whether you're from a different country because we do have uh, people who have also done uh, undergrad or masters from other US universities who are part of the program today. So answer is yes. Uh, the next question I see is someone pursuing, wanting to pursue MS in the US. Um, the answer is, of course, yes. It is very much relevant to uh, doing an MS in the US uh, because, of course, I'm presuming you want to do an MS in the area of computation and in the area of AIML, hopefully, at some level, or utilizing AIML at least, then it's, of course, relevant. Uh, I mean, I would not want to expect anything else. Uh, now, what might be the range of placements? This is an interesting question. The answer is yes. I mean, so um, maybe I will uh, answer this question a little carefully about this full time. The if you're on in a job, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in the next couple of slides. So we'll hold on to this uh, topic for now. This question. Let's move to the next slides, and then I'll probably respond to the question of for people with work experience. Um, so, so as you see on the slide, there are three rounds of in cities in which we keep making decisions. So there's an early application process, which is happens in January, then in March, and then in June. And we'll start the program from July beginning, sometime in July, and we'll push, uh, declare the date soon. Uh, next slide. The fees are uh, very clearly uh, defined here. So the tuition is nine and a half lakhs and the hostel is about 1.7 lakhs. So these are uh, costs that are uh, the typical costs that we have. Now for the tuition, um, there are scholarships available. So we have a very, we have between 25 to 100% waiver on tuition fee depending on very much on uh, merit and need. So we'll be, uh, we strictly follow that. And we, of course, want good students to apply and succeed. 
Hence, the important point is here is once you're selected, then you go into the discussion about uh, scholarships. Um, the hostel is not covered by the scholarship. That's a fundamentally cost that has to be borne by the students because that is what is required to be paid to the hostel, which is basically a separate contract. Next slide. Now, <clears throat> this is again a quick summary of what I have already talked about. So I'm not going to really walk through this slide again, but the point I will just make is, idea is that the, we are teaching you how to build solutions. This is the first thing for which you have to understand design thinking, systems thinking, uh, technology area of work, all of that, right? So that's very important. But also we believe that being entrepreneurial has nothing to becoming an entrepreneur completely. So you don't have to really start a startup. Being entrepreneurial actually helps you to be independent in any organization that you walk into. So that's an important aspect of it. And, and when you are doing that, you are also that at the same time a tech leader. So understand that and that, that leadership part is also very important. The other two really valuable things that we offer is that you work with faculty so that you really learn from the best and also the mentors that, who help you move forward. That's really what the value is. Here's a quick view of the location. Um, so this is Plaksha Innovation Center, which is based in Sector 18 Group now. Um, and you are just seeing some of the, uh, this is the classroom on the left hand side. Uh, you see actually Hitesh Shoberai from uh, InfoEdge and who was the original founder of InfoEdge, which uh, runs, uh, which is Nafi.com. And this is the area where people interact couple of areas where people collaborate. So we have a variety of interesting spaces there. Um, the residences are, there are two buildings which are about 15 to 20 minutes away from uh, the Institute. And uh, of course, there are, we have shuttle buses which also operate at different times in the day, uh, in the morning and the evening so that people can travel or they normally come by themselves as well. Um, quick idea about the cohort uh, that is there today. So 78% of them have prior work experience. And that's where I was going to say that, so 78% of the students uh, of, have joined and they have all had work experience, which means they have all left their jobs to join this. And it's, a, it's an important aspect of this. As you can see, the average age is about 24.5 uh, years, which means average experience is about two, two, two and a half years or so. And this is an important aspect of our program. Um, of course, they are from 16 states and we have 25% of women of the classes women. But the point of that is still, uh, again, people are looking at this as something that will change their life in some form and it is valuable for them. Next slide. Uh, just a quick breakup. Uh, we have taken 10% of non-science uh, or engineering background students this year. Uh, having said that, as I mentioned, a good amount of math is essential for this program. And so that's what we encourage the students to be, uh, to have. So again, this shows a little bit of the age breakup. Next slide. Uh, the students are also from a diverse list of educational institutes. So um, it's really pretty wide. You, you see the top national institutes as well as a number of uh, international institutes here that you've seen. Next slide. They also seem to have work experience in a number of companies. So just give me a sense of organizations they are coming from. This is not a representative of what they are going to work with in future. All right, I'll pause again. And uh, this is a uh, slide we'll wait here and then we can look at other, other questions. Hopefully this answers, I have answered the question on the someone who leaves their current job. 
Now, uh, next question is about recognition by Indian Accrediting Institute. So the answer is no, it is not. So the in university program, so let me quickly summarize why and not so that people understand that. Uh, this is a certificate program by the Indian system. The one year programs are not given master's degree or, uh, or anything else. Plaksha University is coming under the University of Punjab and so will be accredited in the sense, but not the, this program. Okay. Uh, not the, the Tech Leaders Fellowship Program. It's a certificate program which is co-signed by Sutaja Center of Entrepreneurship Technology in UC Berkeley and Paksha. That's it. Uh, the fee structure I've already explained, so I think that should give you an idea again. Uh, so we have shared it in the slide. It will also be on the website. The next question is about final selection process. Uh, when can we expect the final selection process to be completed? I've also mentioned that. So last point is June, but, but the point is if you applied early, your selection is complete early. So it's not that all the results will be announced in June. We will start announcing from January itself. So January, March, and June, you have the three rounds. The process of applying for scholarships is automatic. Um, so this is a question, which is what's the process of applying for scholarship? The process is the moment you apply in the application form itself, you let us know whether you need to have a scholarship. And if you do, then of course, in that case, we will be asking students to share financial background information. And if uh, they're eligible, then of course, we will consider them for scholarship. Yeah, the next question is about the 78% of the 60 students of 2019, the answer is yes. So that data that you just saw, or the slides that I shared right a few minutes ago, those uh, slide deck is about, all of the data is about the 2019 batch that we have. All right. Um, so, so I think uh, it's a relevant question from Sreyansh who is asking about, uh, how do universities abroad look at this program? So I want to say this. So this is a certificate program. What really matters when you apply to, a for, if you are applying to a foreign university for a master's or a PhD program, finally what matters is, uh, are two things. One is the rigor of your education that you have done here on anything that before, and second is the recommendation. So if somebody here, and this is how we advise all the students who are applying or who are studying at Plaksha today in the Tech Leader Fellowship Program, they always say to them that you have to do really well in certain courses which are important to you. And then you want to have the faculty recognize that and they're willing, they should be willing to write your recommendation when you apply to a foreign university. So there are lots of students who actually have been able to impress the faculty who are visiting faculty from UC Berkeley, for example, and they are, they have, they are going to write the recommendations just to give a perspective. So yes, this of course helps in a different way, but the certificate itself is not enough. I just want to mention that. All right. So I see one more question here about many big companies in India demands a postgraduate as a requisite for applying to jobs. So this is very much a postgraduate program. Now let me explain um, an important point here. So if I, let's look at what are the postgraduate programs in India. Uh, so some of the IM programs themselves were not master's programs, they were postgraduate diplomas. Recently, they have started, uh, the Ministry of uh, Human Resources has actually uh, allowed them to both become master's degrees, but they're not all of them have done it, done so yet. Just to put in perspective, ISB, for example, is also a certificate program. It's not a, a MBA degree, definitely. It's a diploma program. Um, so similarly, this is a certificate program. So the point is, uh, so it is definitely a postgraduate program, but it's a certificate program and that's how it works. 
the most important aspect is what have you learned here? And our goal is to make it highly relevant to uh, industry. So all the topics that you saw is about creating solutions than teaching you programming or teaching you EIML so that you can write AIML programs. That was not the main, only goal of this program. Of course, you will learn that. But what you'll also learn is how to build solutions for organizations. And that's the biggest value that we offer. Next question is, do you plan to extend your knowledge for people who can't attend in India, which means you can open centers in uh, other countries? Uh, North Africa is an example. Um, the answer is not in the short term, um, because we have launched this program last year, this year, 2019, and we are going to offer it in 2020. Um, this is not a correspondence course, or this is not an online program. This is very much a residential program. Uh, we are trying to create both an environment of education where we are bringing in top faculty from across the world. Uh, and, uh, but at the same time, we, are all, we also want the students to be close to each other and learn from each other a certain amount. And so this does help. Building the similar program in a different country requires equal amount of effort. And this is not trivial to do, as you can imagine, right? So I don't think in the short term, we can think of anything that in another country. That's all the questions I saw. Um, go ahead, Jiva. Yeah, I think uh, we are done with the questions and uh... Hope everyone got an opportunity to understand more about the plug shift fellowship and clarify the you know, specific questions and queries you had. Uh, thanks, Ananda. Thanks a lot for joining us, you know, deconstructing India's first tech fellowship program for our attendees. And Pallavi, thanks again uh, for being with us, you know, in case of any requirements. So I think we are good to conclude for the day. So if you really want to go back and have a look at the webinar once again, you can check out our YouTube channel of Luxor Techniques Fellowship. You'll be able to see the recordings there. And uh, we'll keep you posted about the upcoming webinar soon. Uh, and just remind once again, the early but deadline is uh, January 5th. So hopefully looking forward to receiving some of the applications. So yeah, thanks everyone. All right. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye.